The Decalogue is the foundation of all Western law. The Decalogue, the common name for it, is the Ten Commandments. And the very first, the very first commandment of the Ten Commandments says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And most people, when they look at that, they say, Well, I'm pretty good there because I have never worshipped the god of the Babylonians, Marduk. I have never worshipped the god of the Greeks, Zeus, or the god of the Romans, Jupiter. I have never worshipped the god of the Europeans, which is Odin and Thor. I have never said a prayer to them. But what you need to understand is that every commandment and also embedded within it is a warning. And when it says, Thou shall have no other gods before me, you need to understand that there is one God that every society, that every civilization, that every people are forced to worship. And that is the God of the state. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today. The God of the state. Every civilization... You have a visible empire and an invisible empire. You have the empire of the tangible and the intangible. Of the physical and of the spiritual. You have government and you have God. And every civilization has tried to come up with ways that they can force their state on people of religion. You see it all down through history. We studied in Western Sea of the culture of Egypt. Pharaoh was the incarnation of God, of the god Ra. So you see the state marrying the religion. And it's a very powerful force. If you go to the Romans, who were very tolerant of most religions, but there was one place they were not tolerant. And that is the idea that you had to bow the knee to Caesar. And there have been literally thousands of Christians that have been put to death because they would not bow the knee to the state, to Caesar. If you look at the Middle Ages, you see the marriage of the church and the state in the Catholic Church of the Middle Ages where the Pope was more powerful than the kings. And so there is the marriage of the two. You see an even better example in Islam where there is the theocracy, where the church and the state are the same. And so the state once again carries the power of the church. If you go to the 20th century, you see another manifestation of that in the ideology of atheism where the state basically says there is no church, there is no spiritual world. And so in a cannibalistic move, the state eats up the church and forbids anyone to worship. And you see that manifested in what was the Soviet Union, and you see it in modern day China. So all down through history, the state have, has always tried to usurp the power of religion, of the idea of God. All governments... All civilizations have had to fight against this. And then you come to the United States, which is a marvelous document in the Constitution. The founders of our Constitution understood the fight that always raged. They understood the tension, and they tried to do the best that they could to, to counteract that. So what they did is try to separate the state from religion. Now, I have heard people say, as soon as you say separation of church and state, people will say that's not in the Constitution. And technically they are correct. But that is what they tried to do, is to separate where you would have the state over here and there would be no state-supported church. You would have the church over here and it would have an influence on the state, but the way it would influence the state is that it would have people, because of the teaching of the church, 
and the morals and the ethics of the church, they would then go out and serve in the state and help support the morals and the ethics and the teachings of the church. They were meant to be engaged but never to be married. They were to be friends but not brothers. And it is a marvelous constitution and it worked pretty well for a long time. But as every situation has it, as every circumstance has it, if there are two people or two cultures, one of them over time becomes more dominant than the other. And that is what has gone on especially in the last 60 years of the United States of America. Because here's what has happened. The gates of power, the gates of influence, these are the places where people come together and congregate and then they go out into the nation. One of them is the public school system. And about 50, 60 years ago, the public school system said we are not going to support the Christian system anymore. I went to a public schools. Everything that we do in this school here, Bible reading, saying prayer, listening to preaching, every bit of that I did in the public schools of 50 years ago. But now the public school system has said we are not supporting the Christian religion. We are not teaching Christian morality or Christian ethics. And it has had a devastating effect on America. The second gatekeeper is the entertainment industry. Now within this you can put movies, you can put books, you can put the music. I will just call it Hollywood. You say, well that had nothing to do with the government, but you would be wrong. Because there were government entities that used to censor the movies. They used to censor what went out over the airways. And if you don't believe this, go back and look at some of the Turner Classic movies that were made in the 40s and 50s. There was no cursing on TV. No filthy language in the movies. And God forbid you ever had any filthy lyrics in a song. That was against the law. 1939, a movie came along. Maybe you've heard of it. Gone with the Wind. It was a powerful movie. It became the number one movie of that year. It was about the Civil War. And toward the end of it, there was a scene that was so powerful, the writers and producers went to the government and said, you have to allow us, please allow us to say one curse word. One curse word is all we need because it needs that curse word. And toward the end of the movie, if you've ever seen Gone with the Wind, you have Rhett Butler, the man, Scarlett O'Hara, and they are having this big fight. And they've had a mercurial relationship all through the movie. They had been married at one time. They had a child that had been killed. And he was ready to walk out on her. And she wanted him to stay. And at the end of the movie, before he walked out of the house, he looked at her and he said, Frankly, I don't give up. And probably most of you can fill in the last word. That was the first curse word ever allowed on the screen. And that was like a hole in the dike, if you will, that broke the dam and now look at all the insidious, pernicious, nasty, evil stuff that is portrayed on the movies, in your music, or whatever it may be. Then you have the sexual revolution which is promoted also by government. I don't really have time to go into it, but I will tell you one way it was promoted. In 1973, the government said that we are not going to honor the sanctity of life anymore. And in Roe versus Wade, in one decision of the Supreme Court, they legalized abortion in this country. Now, let me tell you that many cultures have practiced infanticide. That is basically the killing of unwanted children. Many cultures have done that. 
But it was 1973 that America said, we are going to endorse that and encourage that. We will sacrifice our children on the altar of convenience. And because we are so advanced, we don't have to call it infanticide because we can kill our children before they are even born. We will call it abortion. And keep this in mind, there are more Americans aborted in one year than America as a country has ever lost. Ever lost in all of the wars combined. You combined all of the numbers of people killed in the wars from the Revolutionary War up to now, and they pale in comparison to the number of people that have been aborted in this country. So no longer do we have the sanctity of life. That has led to gay rights, which has led to LGBT rights, <coughs> excuse me, which has led to what we call now the transgender rights, where people are told to participate in a fantasy of people that are under a delusion that there are more than two genders. They are told to participate when 6,000 years ago it says that God created man and woman and there they are, the two genders. And we are told, and there are many people that could lose their job and lose their pension if they do not play along with the delusion that there are more than two genders. It is a fulfillment of Romans 1.22 when Paul is talking about a corrupt country and a corrupt culture and he said professing themselves to be wise they have become fools. And that is where our culture is. Political correctness has basically told everyone to participate in a delusion of fools. And to act like things are right when you know, when you know they are incorrect, you know they are false, and yet we are supposed to participate. And because of all of these things, the past 50 some odd years, the government against God the visible kingdom against the invisible kingdom. And every time the visible kingdom tells the invisible kingdom to bow the knee, we have bowed the knee. We didn't say anything when they took God out of the public schools, when they took prayer out of the public schools. We didn't do anything. Christians did not do anything much when they okayed or made abortion the law of the land. Every time that we are pushed, Christians basically bow the knee. When you see movies and songs that are filled with filth, all Christians do is, how much for that movie, please? Can I have two tickets? And please put the butter on the popcorn. And we have bowed the knee and bowed the knee and bowed the knee. And that's why Hosea cried out thousands of years ago. He said, you have sown the wind and you shall reap the whirlwind. And because Christians have sown the wind of cowardice and complacency, we shall reap the whirlwind. And if you know what a whirlwind is, it is a tornado. And a tornado is one of the most destructive forces of nature. And what we are going to see, because we have bowed the knee and we have worshipped government, is that we are going to reap the whirlwind. We are going to see our families destroyed as we are seeing destroyed. We are going to see marriage destroyed. We are going to see our liberties destroyed, our freedoms destroyed our culture destroyed, and as the saying goes, you ain't seen nothing yet. So the next time you read the very first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Ask yourself, who do you really worship? 
when you are told to bow the knee, is it government or is it God? Or will you, like most people, bow the knee and say Caesar is Lord?